Recently, I picked up this JVC dual cassette deck at a local fall antique festival. And while it's not like I needed another cassette deck, I couldn't just ignore the take it off my hands price of $5. I figured a little cosmetic work and fresh belts were all this machine would require. This project, however, would be a classic case of easier said than done. This isn't going to be a how-to video, more like lessons in patience and taking chances. Let's start off with the cleaning process. The cleaning method deployed was the classic pledge multi-surface cleaner soaked rag and cotton swab technique, with a touch of isopropyl alcohol for the details like grooves and switches. After I was satisfied with the wipe down, I opened the tape doors and removed what dirt and dust I could find from the heads, pinch rollers and such. After that it was time to take a look under the hood. A total of 8 screws came off, with 3 each on the left and right sides of the unit, and the last 2 came off the top of the back. Inside looked pretty good for the most part. I'd already plugged it in and got a light glowing on the peak level indicator, so I knew this unit was getting power. The belts were covered with metal covers, so I just decided to test it the easy way and see if a tape would just simply play. And look at that, the play button doesn't work. Wouldn't you know it, the belts are melted. They would have to be replaced if there was any chance of getting this player working again. This next segment of clips is me poking and prodding, trying everything in my power not to do what I know will ultimately have to be done. Because I knew with all those screws, there's no way I'm getting this bad together the way it came apart. At this point, it was getting kind of late, and the self-doubt started kicking in. Was it really worth trying to fix this? With the thin belts and budget feel of it all? I mean, I'm no expert when it comes to fixing electronics. It's a hobby I'm trying to get into, and I've had my fair share of failed fix-it projects. Maybe this one was destined to be another one of those. I decided to call it a night and figure out an ultimatum the next evening. The next night I was looking it over again and just decided it's already broken anyway. The only thing I can do is just make it more broken if I can't find all the pieces and get them back together again. So I went to work and screwing all the screws that I could find that I felt need to be removed to get access to the belts. Even then I could only bend back the metal covering. So I had one hand holding back the covering and the other hand and my tools trying to clean off melted belt goo and replace them with the new belts. Needless to say, this wasn't built with repair in mind, but eventually I was able to clean up as much goo as I could and replace the belts. My workplace is going to need a serious scrub down when this is over. Turns out, new belts were all it seemed to need. I got most of the screws back in place and started testing out tapes. While one of my home recorded tapes didn't sound that great, I thought my copy of Invisible Touch from Genesis sounded good enough considering it was being played through old Altec Lansing computer speakers. At this point, I was thinking of what else could be done to it, like attempting a tuning, but I don't have the tools for that, plus with leftover goo I couldn't remove and thin belt replacements, maybe it's a bit much work for this type of deck. At 5 bucks, I felt like I got my money's worth alone when I heard a tape playing after the first belt replacement for this thing in probably ever. I never planned to keep it when buying it, but thought it would make a nice gift for a friend who regrettably got rid of a tape deck he had a while back. Like I said earlier, this video wasn't going to be a how-to video, but looking back, this project was kind of like a Magic School Bus episode. I took a chance, made some mistakes, and definitely got messy. Thanks for watching.